hey, I'm sitting at a stoplight for no reason. <laughs> no, there's nobody behind me, and I was at a stoplight, and I figured I'd get my, I'd get my thing going while I wasn't driving anywhere. It is another disgusting, cold, wet, cloudy day. It's just gross. It's 40 degrees, and again, I had on some, I had on a coat, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm sweaty. Ugh, I came from another class, and the, the mother and daughter that were there last week, they didn't go. They did not, they did not attend. I'm shocked. Imagine my shock, they were not there. I'm trying to see if I can navigate myself to the Walmart I never go to. There are, we have numerous Walmarts here in Greensboro. It's a city, of, the Greensboro is a city of almost 300,000 people. And we have Walmarts everywhere. We have the, what we call the big, I call them the big Walmarts, the super centers. And then we have neighborhood markets, which is basically like the size of a regular grocery store. And they don't have all the stuff that the super centers have. There's a super center here. Well, actually there are a couple of super centers here that I never go to. So I'm gonna see if I can get to one without the GPS lady telling me where to go. So I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see if I can do this without help. I don't have anything else to do right now, so it's not like I I don't have to get there at any certain time. So I'm just gonna go this way and see what happens. I have a general idea of where it is. I'm going to check the nail polish section. I feel like it's a lost cause. Like why am I even bothering at this point? Because I've, I've now been to 10 different Walmarts in North Carolina and Virginia, and they're all the same. The names have been removed from all of the displays for the nail polish. Like, all of them. What I don't understand, and this is what I don't get, okay, why didn't you just leave the names on there? See, that's why I think they were in the middle of, it, you know, like, they all had a reason to believe they were going to be redone. So they went ahead and removed a bunch of the, the names, but it just never happened. For whatever reason, it just never got done. I don't know, because personally, I would think if, if you, they must not have known it was gonna take this long to get done, because otherwise, why bother taking all the names off? That just makes life harder for the, not just the customers, but the employees. It makes life harder for everybody if they don't know where stuff goes. Well, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe for the employees, it makes it easier because you can just put it wherever and hell, you're not wrong. I mean, you can't prove I put it in the wrong spot because you don't know where the hell it goes. Anyway, I'm not just going there for that. I actually need a few things. One of the, one of the most recent shortages I've discovered around here is saltine crackers. You can't find saltine crackers anywhere around here. I don't know why, but you cannot get them. They haven't had saltines at Aldi in over a month. And my kids, for whatever reason, they love saltine crackers. They eat them as a snack. It's just the craziest thing. They love them. And they go through crackers like I don't know what. They put cheese on them sometimes. They'll eat them with a little bit of like sliced cheese, cut up an apple, and eat them all together like a little snack plate, you know. I don't know. <laughs> so... But I can't find crackers anywhere. I tried to buy the clubhouse crackers at Aldi. They're like townhouse crackers. I think they taste fine. My kids both turned their noses up at them. They turned down a clubhouse cracker because they couldn't get their saltines. I was, <laughs> I was talking to my older son yesterday. I got home from, I had gone to Aldi and I got home. And I said, they're still out of saltines. He said, how? How, how can they not make saltines? It's salt and eam. Can't they just make them? He's just being silly. I said, I don't know, but for whatever reason, they, can, they cannot seem to produce any saltine crackers right now. Yeah, it's basically like, what, three ingredients? Come on now. Salt and eam. That's it. Saltines. Can't get them, though. I guess there could be, there are worse things going on in the world than my inability to find now crackers. But if I want, if I want a bowl of tomato soup, I want, I want a few crackers to go in it. Let me tell you something that's really good. It's a very simple little thing, but I love it. I need to get out of this lane. I gotta get over there. How far over there do I need to go? I am not sure. I think I need to stay right here. 
I don't have the GPS lady to tell me what to do. I, you don't lose the ability to navigate. Well, shit, I moved for no reason. It said I needed to get over here. The signs lied to me that I need to be over here. Isn't that, is that right? Hang on. One moment. I need an admin moment. Yeah, I think, I think this is right. I think I need to stay in the, uh, going. The road splits right here. You got part of 85 goes that way. Business goes this way. All right. What was I saying? Oh, yes. A simple thing. And I love this in the wintertime. If, if it's cold outside, like today would be a perfect day for it. You take a can of Campbell's tomato soup. And I prefer Campbell's. That is one thing that I won't buy the store brand of is tomato soup or chicken noodle soup. I always buy Campbell's because it just, it just tastes better to me. And it's worth paying a little bit more for it. Take a can of chicken, uh, tomato soup. You can get low sodium if you want, but I don't like the low sodium. It tastes weird. Get a can of soup, put it in a bowl, and then fill the, cup, the can with milk. Pour that in there, stir it up. Heat it however, however hot you want it. And then I sprinkle a little bit of Parmesan cheese on the top and crumble crackers in there. You can use oyster crackers, but I prefer just regular saltine crackers. And uh, make a, gr a little grilled cheese sandwich to go with that. Oh my word. It is the perfect little lunch for a cold, nasty day. I love it. So instead of using water like the can says, just use milk. Also, I use milk when I'm making chicken noodle soup. Put milk in there instead of water. It is so good. Oh, once you do it, you won't go back to water. Well, you might. My younger son prefers water. He doesn't like milk in it, but he, my younger son has strange tastes when it comes to food. Typically, he likes things to be very bland, and he doesn't eat much. He never has. Ever since he was little, he just, I don't know, he doesn't require much to survive. Now, he's always thirsty. He's always drinking something. Typically, he prefers to drink water. Or a glass of milk that's that's his thing like he loves he's always drinking some usually water or milk maybe juice but usually water or milk and yeah I don't know so he likes water in his chicken noodle soup I, bleh, I don't know after I tried milk in it I could, I could if water just tastes gross so yeah I'm having a a tough time with my younger son. Not not that he's done anything wrong. Although last night I I was ready to jerk a knot in him because he's do he's okay. Let me back up. My younger son is twelve and people say he looks a lot like me, but he actually doesn't. If you saw his dad, he is the spitting image of his father at the, at his age. He really he is the spitting image of his dad at a young age. He doesn't really look like me. Um so, but he's very creative. He's he draw, He's good at drawing. He's, he's, wow. I mean, I can't get over how well he can draw. He has a lot of talent for drawing, although he he doesn't believe it. If you try to tell him that, he no, I, you know, he, he doesn't go around boasting about it. He doesn't like me to show his drawings to anybody. He's, he likes to keep them to himself, you know. He's really good, and I hope he will continue to do it. Um, when he draws, I see a lot of my brother's talent there. Because my brother, when he was young, loved to draw, and he was so good at it. So good. He had so much talent. And he would make clay models of birds and stuff, and they were so, they looked so real. Um, he'd spend hours on it. He'd just sit in his, in his room by himself. Sorry. This weather's just that. Got a fur ball or something. He was sitting in his room for hours drawing or making little models. That was my brother. And he's, I come from a family of mostly introverts. I mean, we all just kind of prefer to do our own thing by ourselves. You know, we're not social butterflies at all. My dad is a little bit though. My dad is more, you know, he doesn't like being by himself so much. But anyway, so my younger son is, he's very, very creative. Um, and what he started doing is, he, he has one of my old cell phones and he's using the, the camera on one of my old cell phones and he will take, he has this collection of little plushies from Five Nights at Freddy's. He used to be really into that, into Five Nights at Freddy's and he would, he'll take his plushies and make like 
stories. He would he will invent he will make up stories involving these characters, and there's a whole story arc to it, you know. And he will take he will set up the phone on a little tripod and make a video telling the story with his little characters. And he was really excited about the mini brands things. He said, "Oh, mom, please can I have those? Because I want to use them in my stories." Do I need to take that exit? I probably should have taken that exit right there. Shit. Yeah, I think that was me. Well, I'll take the next one and see what happens. So what happens when I don't have somebody telling me where to go? I get to talking and I forget that I'm, I'm looking for an exit. I think that was my exit back there. That's all right. Well, last night, he had all of his plushies out and he was in the middle of telling, you know, making a video. And apparently it went on for a long time because he was still waking me up at 2 a.m. because he's down in the living room, which is right under my bedroom. And he's banging around down there. I don't know what was going on. It, the story got violent or something. He's down there just felt like he was hammering on something. Like he had a jackhammer down there. And I went down there like, what are you doing? He said, Mom, I'm telling my story. I said, Lord, son. You know, you gotta go to sleep. He's really bad to stay up late on the weekends. But he, he he's made these videos of his, of his characters. And it's actually, I don't know if I should turn there. I need to get turned around, I believe. And they're actually, it's actually really good. And it reminds me a lot of what I used to do when I was a kid. I would take my toys. I had a big collection of rubber snakes and stuff. And just stuffed animals and little plastic animals. And I would take them outside. I didn't have a video, any way to make a video of it. I mean, this was back in the late 70s, early 80s. I would take them out there and make up these whole stories or I'd, you know, play with them in my room. And there were individual characters and there was character development and story arcs and plot twists and, you know, the stories would get really elaborate sometimes. And I would make up these stories and, um, it's kind of cool to see him doing the same thing. He just came up with it on his own. And, um, let's see, Florida Street's on the next right. What would happen if I went down Florida Street? Florida Street in Greensboro will take you damn near anywhere. If you get on Florida Street, you can get just about anywhere you want to go. I don't know how that is, but Florida Street is some kind of magic street. It does. Florida Street pops up everywhere. You get on Florida Street, you go. It's like a this is your life of Greensboro. It will take you to every part. Oh shit! Which way do I go here? My instincts say go that way. I'm right or not, but I'll find out. Now what? What is this? Um, I don't even know what street this is. Oh, shit. Somehow I'm on Hooks. What the hell is Hooks Street? Lord, I have done runoff. I'm in a neighborhood. I'm in a residential area. I didn't mean to end up here. This is why I need the GPS. You know, I have ancestors that navigated the seas by the stars. I can't, I can't even find Walmart without the GPS. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Yeah, this is definitely, God almighty, this is definitely not. They got a whole proper gate with their initials on it and everything. Wow. This is definitely not the way to Walmart. And of course, I got somebody right on my butt. Bot Bothwell? Both Bothwell? Never heard of that. Okay, I don't know where the hell this goes. I have to get out of here eventually. So anyway, my son is really creative and he comes up with these stories. And I hate to hamper his creativity. But when it's 2 a.m. and I'm trying to sleep and he keeps waking me up by shrieking and banging on things and dropping things on the floor, you know, eventually I got to tell him to go knock it off. Like, you've got to go to bed. You cannot. What are you doing? You know, I have to tell him to stop. So, but he's really creative and I love that. 
I love him anyway, but he's just, he's, he's got a special spark about him. Both of my kids do. My, my older son has this inner strength and confidence that I never had at his age, and I really admire him for that. He's, I'm just taking turns. I don't even know where the hell I'm going. I figure I'll end up somewhere. He, ha he does. My older son is so, I don't know. He just has this strength about him that's kind of hard to describe. It's like, you can tell that he will grow up to not be a person who takes crap off of people. And I wish I had had that. And I'm so glad he does. Okay, I think I need to be on that road, but I can't get there unless I run off the bridge, which I probably shouldn't do. You ever do that? Like, I need to get there, but I can't get there from here. I could jump the bridge. Maybe better not. So, my son, my younger son, has had trouble this year with a bully. Actually, a bully and the bully's associates or friends or minions or whatever they are. And I hate that so much for him. My older son went through something similar in middle school. My younger son is in seventh grade. And I don't know about you, but for me, middle school was a freaking nightmare. It was an absolute nightmare. I hated middle school so much. I hated it. I had a bully as well in the seventh grade. And then in, also in the eighth grade, she was in my homeroom again in the eighth grade. Classic mean girl classic mean girl and my son's bully is a girl and that's why I think the school is not taking it seriously at all no I've had a talk with his teacher and the principal actually the assistant principal the principal is always busy for some reason never seems to have time to talk to anyone Ooh, that's a big church come on elements church road a big old church over there. It's gigantic. So, I have tried to, and I, and I went through the same thing with my older son. I'm not a big fan of the principal at this school because I went around and around with the principal about an issue my son was having with a bully on the, he had a bully on the bus and a separate bully at school and things that were going on that were just completely inexcusable. And the principal just blew me off like, well, you know how boys are. Um, Mm -mm, mm -mm. Yeah, we went round and around. I, I don't care for that principal at all. He was completely useless and didn't care. You know, it's funny because they give such lip service to zero tolerance for bullies. We don't, yes, you, you tolerate bullies. You tolerate the hell out of them. You don't do anything to them. They don't. They talk about it. But if you come to them and say, hey, there's this kid bullying my son. Here's what's happening. My son even has video of it. Of this of something that this kid physically assaulted my son on numerous occasions and the principal was just oh you know how boys are and I told him one time I said if my son was a girl I guarantee you you would not have that attitude he is putting his hands on my son in a very inappropriate way and I promise you if she was if my son was a girl you would not respond like that but because he's a boy I guess we're just not gonna worry about it I wish I had pursued it on up the chain beyond him, but my son, my son just said, drop it, mom. I don't, don't. You're just, you know, I didn't want to make it worse for him. It's, it's a hard situation to deal with, and the school wouldn't do anything at all. They refused to get involved. They just, all they would ever say to my son was, well, just ignore him and he'll stop. Oh my God, no. Just ignore him and he'll stop. That's what they used to tell me. I had bullies in elementary school and middle school. Not really so much in high school because I was engaged to a super rough guy that I think some kids were kind of afraid of this guy. Whole other story. I, I got in with a crazy rough crowd in high school and I was engaged at 16 to a very rough dude. But that has nothing to do with... I, I, I have a bad habit of making every video about myself. And I realize I do that and I'm sorry. I'm pulling off in this parking lot because I have no freaking clue where I am. I'm at Christ's Restoration Assembly. Is Christ running a factory with Christ's Restoration Assembly? 
We're restoring and assembling shit. Sorry, stuff. Sorry, Jesus. I don't know if you've noticed, I'm not a particularly religious person. That's also a story for another day. That right there, that, well, shit, you can't see because of my car. That's Christ's restoration assembly. <clears throat> well, there's nobody restoring or assembling anything here now. I guess they've all gone home um, or they've headed to the liquor store. I'll be right back. I got to consult the GPS lady because I'm now out in a wooded area and it's getting weird out here. It's like I'm going to be abducted or baptized or something. So I'll be right back. Well, I found a Walmart. Apparently, I was only about six minutes away. If I just kept going on Alamance Church, I would have seen that it kind of turned back into civilization right over the hill beyond the, the Jesus factory thing. Um, I made it out. I'm now in the parking lot of Walmart. So, yeah, I'm a little, I'm concerned about my son because he does have, a, he has a bully that he's been dealing with. Really, he wasn't really bothered by this girl until, see, all right, this girl's an asshole. I'm just going to say it. Yeah, she's a she's a jerk. Um, she was bullying this other girl in their class, and the girl ended up moving away or changing homerooms or something. And my son said that after that girl was no longer there, the bully turned her attention to my son. And now she bullies him. See, he has really long hair, and she makes inappropriate. She calls him inappropriate things because he is a boy with long hair, and she says things that are just really, really not appropriate to him, and makes fun of him um, just for e anything. You know, you know how bullies are. I mean, they can find any reason to pick on you. Um, it doesn't matter, and it's like they have this radar. Like they can just pick kids that are vulnerable. I know for me, it's like I had a target on my back all throughout elementary school. Well, I went to a tiny school, so there weren't many of us, but yeah, they, they, um, it, I was very tender hearted. I was described by all my teachers as tender hearted. Oh, you're just tender hearted, you know? And it was described in such a way that being tender hearted was a bad thing. You know, you need to fix that. You need to just, you need to toughen up. You need to quit crying. You know, these kids wouldn't pick on you and make you cry if you were tougher. And I, all I ever knew to say in sheer frustration was, well, if they quit picking on me, I'd quit crying all the time. Like, I don't know what you want me to do. Well, you just need to stop that. Oh, why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I just flip the switch that you seem to think I have that I could just turn that off? Well, my son has the same problem. He's, he's tenderhearted. He's very sensitive. And this girl has discovered that about him. And she's discovered that all she has to do is call him horrible names and pick on just anything she can think of. Any Anything she will find a reason to pick on him. And I had to ask because I was just curious. I asked him, I said, is there any chance that she has a crush on you? She said, no, absolutely not. I, that is, I don't think it's that. I think she just found a new victim when the other girl left the class. He said she never even spoke to me before that. But it's like she needed a new victim, and once that other girl was no longer in the homeroom class, she had to find a new person to torture, basically. And the bad thing is, this girl also rides his bus. So he has to deal with her on the bus and at school. The only time he gets away from her is when he goes to his um, specials. It's where they, they each have different classes they take a couple of days a week. And he loves those classes. Number one, one of his classes is art. And he loves his art class and his art teacher. And she's not in there. And he really loves that. So he can get away from her. And he loves art. And he has another special that he goes to. I forget what it, shit, what is, I don't even remember what his other special is. Because I'm a shitty parent. Um, he talks about art a lot. Oh, it's, um, it's got a weird, weird name. It's basically home ec. He also takes home ec. But it's not called that. It's called, um, like, independent living or something. That's his other special. And uh, and she's not in any, either of those classes. He's not crazy about the home act type class. But she's not in there, so that's cool. They're sewing right now. They're learning how to, how to sew. So, which is cool. I think everybody should do should do some of that. It's, it's a good skill to have. Um, anyway, so she picks on him, like, just any anything, like, the whatever clothes he's got on. He likes to dress a certain way and she makes fun of him for it. 
Um, but it hasn't changed the way he is. Like, I don't care. You know, she can pick on me, but I'm not going to dress differently to suit this idiot. You know, and so I really hate it for him because I've tried talking to the teacher. I've tried talking to the assistant principal. And they, they just kind of laugh it off like, well, he just needs to toughen up. Your son just needs to learn, you know, to be tougher. What happened to your zero tolerance policy for bullying? I mean, there are witnesses that have observed, they've seen and heard her calling him horrible things. But I guess, I guess bullying only matters if it's under certain circumstances. Otherwise, they don't worry about it. Um, my brother went through the same thing when he was in middle school. When he was in eighth grade, there was just, now this was back in that early 80s. There was a boy that bullied him relentlessly and would, you know, call him a nerd and a dork because he was kind of a bookish kid, you know, he had glasses and he was always carrying tons of books around and reading all these things, you know. And this kid would call him, you know, a nerd or a, a dweeb or whatever. And and whenever he tried to talk to anybody about it, same thing. Oh, just ignore him. He'll stop. Well, it escalated to the point that this other kid was, like, pushing him down, knocking his books out of his hands, kicking him, you know, tripping him, making him fall. You know, just in, in plain view of teachers and other students in the hallway, nobody did anything other than tell my brother, you know, well, just, just keep ignoring him. He'll stop. And one day... I guess my brother had just had it. My brother is a very quiet kid, never bothers anybody, you know, very unassuming, wouldn't ever hurt anybody. But one day, I don't know, my brother just had had enough. This had gone on all year and it was only getting worse. And the kid tripped my brother, made him fall, drop all of his books. And my brother just got up and decked him. I mean, one punch knocked him, he knocked him out cold. Just bam, ended up with a black eye, knocked him out, boom. And now this again was back in the 80s. They handled things very differently. My brother was not punished. The other kid was suspended for three days and they called my mom in to talk to them and basically said, well, you know, we knew this was going on and you know, so my mom's like, well, if you knew it was going on, why didn't you step in before it got to this point? And they didn't really have an answer for that. Well, we thought it would stop if he ignored him, you know. Like, I bet it'll stop now. And it did. That kid never bothered him again. Never said another word to him. So, yeah, there was no kerfuffle or anything. The kid got, the other kid was suspended for three days. And they didn't do anything to my brother. They would, it wouldn't go that way now because a similar thing happened with my older son when he was in middle school. Same thing. This kid was physically putting his hands on my son, saying very inappropriate things to him. And, um, and my son tried to ignore it, tried to ignore it. Nobody would do anything. And one day, this kid put his hands on my son in the classroom, right, right in the, like, groped his butt in the classroom. And my son... The kid was sitting down. My son grabbed his head and slammed it into the desk. Yeah, he, he got suspended. He was suspended. The other kid was not. And I I said, you know, he, I didn't punish him for it. I said, no, because I was aware this had been going on for months. Nobody would do anything. This kid was groping my son, and nobody would do anything. And uh, so, anyway, that kid never messed with my son again never touched him again so yeah he was suspended for three days but it it solved the problem with the bully the bully left him alone after that I don't see my younger son ever doing anything and I'm not saying I want him to slam this girl's head into a desk but it sucks it just sucks I hate this situation and I think I'm gonna have to if it doesn't stop which it doesn't appear it's going to I think I'm just gonna have to go find somebody else to talk to other than any, somebody at the school I think I'm going to have to go over their heads to somebody else. The only concern I have, though, is that it will make it worse. I don't, I don't want this girl to retaliate against him. I'm, I don't know. I might see about maybe moving him to another homeroom or something. I don't know if that would help or not. But they still ride the same bus. So, I don't know. See, the thing is, he doesn't want to stop riding his bus because he has another good friend that he only sees on the bus. 
And he said, I, you know, most of the time she doesn't bother me too much on the bus um, because they have assigned seats on the bus. So it's a little harder because she's further away from him. And he gets to sit, like he's made a, a good friend on the bus. And he said, that's the only time we ever get to see each other. And I want to be able to see my friend every day. So I don't know. It's, it's difficult. You know, when you have kids, it's easy to sit there and say, well, clearly you need to do blah, blah, blah. And that would solve your problem. Yeah, it's not always that simple. It is not. I wish it was. And frankly, I think it should be that simple, but it's not. It's not It's not that simple. You can't just snap your fingers and make these problems go away. Um, I never told my parents that I was being bullied by this girl. And it was relentless. Same thing, and it escalated to her pushing me and shoving me and accidentally knocking me down. And, but I never, I never told my parents about it. Um, I don't know why. It's like, but my parents were not terribly interested in anything going on with me. Like, they were just distracted by their own stuff. And they never, I can't remember them ever asking me how my day was or how I was doing or it never, I don't think it ever occurred to them to ask that. And I ask my kids that every day when they come home from school. How was your day? You know, what, you know, what's going on? Do you have any homework? You know, what, what happened? Anything interesting happened today? Because I want them to know I give a shit because I never felt that from either of my parents. Nobody ever asked me how I was doing. And maybe if somebody had, I would have told them about this girl at some point, but I felt like there was no point in talking to them about it. But she bullied me, and then the eighth grade was worse because she had a couple of her friends in the homeroom as well, and so the three of them kind of ganged up on me all year. And I didn't have the nicest clothes. My parents didn't drive nice vehicles. We were like lower upper, we were like upper lower class. We were like, you know, we didn't have a lot of money. I didn't have nice things. And these, this girl would pick on me because of my shoes or my, you know, my clothes weren't nice enough or she saw like my mom or my dad drop me off and she would make fun of what they were driving, you know, like it was, you know, just, you know, can't believe that thing even runs, you know, stuff like that. And she would call me trailer trash and, you know, just whatever she could think of to call me. And it really hurt. It really hurt. And I never told anybody about it. I just silently endured it for two years. And I hated, I dreaded going to school. I hated going to school because I knew I would have to deal with her. And she would say things about me in front of other classmates and like try, you know, make fun of me and make jokes about me and in order to fit in because she was like one of the cool kids and they wanted to fit in so they would laugh along but tell me later like I was really bad and you know, I, 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 I don't really agree with her about how you are. You know, like, well, then why were you agreeing with her in the cafeteria in front of everybody? Because there's this pressure to be cool, I guess. I think that's probably why I never really worried about being cool because I wasn't. I didn't really, and after a while, it's like, you know what? From my experience, most of the cool kids are, are really shallow assholes. So I'm not really worried about being cool anyway. And I think my younger son kind of has the same opinion of it. Like this girl, I think is one of the, one of the cool kids or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. She seems like a bitch to me. Um, hurt people, hurt people. I told my son, you know, it could be that at home she's treated like that or she's ignored and she does this to feel powerful and like she matters. It doesn't justify what she's doing, but normal people would never talk to another person like that. We've had a lot of discussions about it. And I've been trying to talk to him about what do you what do you want me to do? I don't I don't want to do anything that's going to make things worse. But at the same time I realize this is a problem that needs to be dealt with and the school is just not worried. They're not worried about it. It's like with my older son, they were not worried about it. Which is why I said if he was a girl, you would probably be a lot more concerned if there was someone groping the child. You know what I'm saying? But because he's a boy, I guess you just don't care. Yeah. Zero tolerance for bullying my ass. I don't know. So, I don't know. I, I don't know how it's going to work out. I am hoping, let's see, it's February. Well, shit, they still have three more months of school. 
I am hoping, I am hoping, hoping, hoping that he will not have to deal with her next year. He did say something, and I don't know if it's true or not because this girl just talks out of her ass all the time. She lies about things. He said that her dad was going to get another job and they were going to transfer away. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm sitting here like, I hope so. That'd be, that'd be really great if they would just fuck off somewhere else. That'd be fabulous. I hate it for the kids where she's going, but take this little piece of shit. I don't mean to talk about, about a child that way. Take this kid and move her out of my son's life. That would be great. She, as far as I know, she is the main problem. And he said the other kids never picked on him before she kind of pulled him into it. She has her little minions that agree with whatever she says because she thinks she's hot shit or whatever. And kids are awful. Kids are awful. And that's why I've tried with my kids to teach them to be nice to people. You know, don't, don't treat other people like that. That is so messed up. I don't know. I hate, I hate that there are so many mean kids out there. And most of them go on to, to become mean adults. Mean adults didn't start that way when they were grown. They, they were uh, probably that way as children as well. I think a lot of it comes down to whatever their home environment is. They might be bullied at home. They might be ignored at home. I would be willing to bet, though, there's something going on in their, in their home life that's not good that's not being addressed and this is their outlet this is the way they deal with it and it's not a good coping strategy at all it's not a good way to learn to cope with problems by being a jerk to other people but anyway I'm working on it I'm dealing with it um, my kids have been in therapy in the past for issues I've talked to my son about maybe going back to therapy he said he would think about it if talking to somebody would help I really think that with a problem like this, I don't know that talking with someone is going to make a difference. I think doing something about it would make a difference, like actively removing either her from the class or him from the class. Or I think they have assigned seats. And I've thought about at least asking the teacher, can you at least separate them more? Like, can you put them in, on opposite ends of the room or something where she, at least while class is in session, is not so close to him? So she can't whisper things to him and say things that he can hear. I don't know if it would help, but it's an idea. It sucks. It sucks. You know, if you have kids, talk to them. Let them know you care. Ask them how their day is going. Ask them if there's, you know, anything they want to talk about occasionally. Because I think if my parents had done that, it would have really meant a lot to me if my parents had ever bothered to say, hey, you know, Mary, how are you? How, how are you doing? How's school? I never got that. I never got that. And I, I wish I had gotten it. I didn't. I would make really good grades. I'd bring home, you know, a report card with all A's. And I would show it to my mom or my dad. And it was usually, don't bother me now. I'm trying to watch the news. Or, I got a headache. Do I have to sign that? <sighs> give it here. Give it. Look, give it. Bring me a pen. Okay, here. I'm going to go lay down. No attaboy or way to go. I try so hard with my kids to let them know that I care. Because I know what it feels like to think that they don't. But, I don't know. One way or the other, we're going to fix this problem. I am going to deal with this special little cupcake that is messing with my kid because screw that. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's a problem I'm aware of and I'm going to deal with it, but I'm going to go into Walmart on a fruitless venture and see if the nail polish is a possibility. Although they're playing really loud music outside of the store. They have these loudspeakers outside. It's kind of weird. All the Walmarts play really loud music outside and inside. I don't see the reason to play it outside, but they do. And I have a feeling if it's that loud out here, it's probably super loud in there. But I want to go look at it anyway. And maybe I can find some saltine crackers while I'm here. That would be cool as well. That'd be great. But I hope you're having a good Sunday. 
I'll be happy when the sun comes back out, if it ever comes back out. This cloudy mess just depresses me, but yeah. I will see you again soon. You have a great day. Bye-bye.